An entitled Karen steals my car keys, claiming that I couldn't possibly be the owner of my car. And as a result, she got arrested and had to do some jail time. Here's what happened. This incident was so stupid that I can't really help but share the story since my friends keep telling me to do it. What I find the most weird about this is that my car wasn't anything super special. It was just a yellow 2009 V6 Chevy Camaro with black stripes on it. When I bought it, it was super cheap because the passenger side door had been smashed in somehow and there was already 130,000 miles on the odometer. But somehow the title was still good. No idea why nor do I really care. All I know was that the car looked like a good deal so I bought it. A friend of mine who works in auto body fixed it up for me. He said that most of the damage was to the door itself and I just needed a new door after he made a few tweaks to make sure everything was straight. Together we managed to find a door at a salvage yard that was the same color. A little work and the car looked almost new and it became my fun ride to commute to work or just to drive around in when I didn't feel like using my other car. I didn't do any modifications to it. I'm not one of those guys that's into speed or any crazy mods. I like the car because it looked cool and the gas mileage wasn't so bad with a V6. In fact, I wanted a V6 Camaro because I heard that they're usually in better condition than the ones that have a V8 in it because people typically drive the V6 more for looks rather than power. I drove that Camaro for a year before running into a random entitled Karen at a supermarket last year in September. Those places tend to draw Karens in the regular, especially in the state I live in. I've seen many Karens before, but was lucky to hardly ever be noticed by them. I was shopping for some stuff to make dinner and was about to head home when I found the Karen with her young son all over my car after exiting the store. I'm guessing the boy was around four years old and his mother was taking pictures of the kid sitting on my hood while the kid kept smiling and gleefully saying Bumblebee. Yes, I understand the reference and I've heard it all before from the movie Transformers. I don't like people messing with my property and I told the kid to get off. The entitled Karen took one look at me and told me to mind my own business. Now, I'm 29 years old, but I have a bit of a baby face and my casual clothing made me look like a teenager. So I guess to her, I couldn't possibly be someone who would have anything to do with such a nice car. I told this entitled Titled Karen to get off of my Camaro, and she bluntly told me that there's no way this was my car because I'm too young. So I pulled out my keys and I hit the alarm button on the remote. That made the alarm start blaring for a second, and her kid jumped off while screaming and crying because I had frightened him. But rather than paying attention to her crying kid, the entitled Karen came running at me full speed and managed to shove me hard enough that I fell over. The next part is a bit hazy. I got a bump on the head, and that crazy. Crazy Karen slurred every word she was screaming at me. She stepped on my arm and pulled the keys from my hand before I really had a chance to react. Though she didn't really hurt me much, she was also not a big woman, only about 5'2 or something like that. I'm about 6 foot and I weigh over 170 pounds. When I got to my feet, she was comforting her crying child and telling him that I was a mean person. I told her to return my keys, but she got upset and said there's no way the Camaro was mine. I again stated it was and would only give her one more chance to return my keys. Well, she decided that she wasn't going to give them back. Instead, she handed them to her kid who proceeded to start playing with the buttons on the remote and unlock the doors. I had had enough at this point and I got my phone out and I called the police. When the Karen saw I was on my phone, she started screaming and charging at me again. Though this time I easily dodged her and she nearly fell on the asphalt and screamed that I had assaulted her. I never even touched her and I said that out loud. The 911 operator was listening to everything that was going on, and I quickly told her where we were while this insane woman was still screaming at me. Pretty quickly, two police cars showed up. At this point, the Karen had locked herself in my car with her son and started the engine to run the AC. I explained everything to the police, and they knocked on the window of my Camaro to get the entitled Karen to open it, and to give them her side of the story. She claimed the car to be hers, and that I was just some stupid teenager that tried to carjack her. Then she started bragging to the police officer that she pushed me down and took me out, completely admitting that she had assaulted me. The officer asked me to clarify if she really did push me over, to which she bluntly said yes. I told the police officer to look in my glove compartment, and in there was my insurance card and a copy of my registration. And they could compare the name on my license just to have added proof. When this entitled Karen heard that, she got 
out of the car and finally admitted it wasn't hers, but then said there is no way it could be mine, and that she took the keys from me to try and find the real owner. That quickly earned her some shiny new bracelets, and she was put screaming into the back of the police car. The parking lot had cameras, so it was easy to prove the assault, though I only really got scratches, a bruise on my arm from where she stepped on it, and a small bump on my head. After the Karen was taken back to the station, they found she was high on some kind of substance, which explains why she went so nuts. I, of course, pressed charges, though my testimony wasn't really needed since the police had the closed circuit television from the parking lot, as well as the audio from my phone call to prove that she was guilty. This turned out to be the third offense for this entitled Karen, and she got two years in prison because of this. The whole incident made me rethink owning the Camaro, so in the end, I sold it. I basically got back everything I had into it anyways, so in the end, I broke even. I doubt I'll ever want to get another sports car ever again after getting assaulted by that crazy Karen. This crazy situation is unbelievable. I can't believe that a Karen tried to steal your car. This lady straight up assaulted the original poster, got in their car, and then tried to claim it was theirs. I mean, what kind of game plan is that? You're definitely not going to get that past the police, and it's not like the police are going to outright believe you and be like, oh, of course it's your car. Go ahead. Like, they're going to check registrations, license, they're going to make sure everything's where it should be. But this lady thought, oh, if I just say it's mine, I can get away with it. Absolutely tragic overall. Especially with the fact that he had to sell this car just to get rid of it. Because apparently people kept bothering him about it. And I know exactly the car he's talking about, and it really is a cool, very popular car. But I completely understand where he's coming from when he says, nope, it's just not worth it. Because sometimes you want to drive around in your car and not be bothered. And people can be very, very weird. So it's awesome to see this Karen get exactly what she deserves. And it looks like after so many offenses, jail time's the only thing to make her stop. So hopefully now this person can just drive around in peace and they won't have some crazy entitled Karen trying to push them down and steal their car. Today, I messed up by not paying attention while making a smoothie. And boy, do I regret it. So I make a smoothie for lunch pretty much every day with more or less the same ingredients in it. Some frozen fruit, some yogurt, juice, ice, and some protein powder. But today, I was in a rush and I was trying to make it quick because I was trying to get back to a multiplayer game I was in the middle of. I was at the very end of my protein powder jug, which comes with a little plastic scoop to act as a reasonable serving size for the protein. I put the powder in and I thought I put the scoop back in the empty jar, but boy was I wrong. When I turned on the blender, I noticed that there was something stuck rattling around. The blender I use is nearly 10 years old and often has trouble blending these smoothies, and so I didn't think anything of it. It was probably just some ice, so I stopped it, shook it a bit, and tried again. After doing this one more time, again still trying to rush and not giving it a second thought, eventually everything blended together just fine. So I poured the smoothie and immediately upon drinking some of it, I noticed some crunchy bits of something in the smoothie. This is where I think most people would think not to drink it, but I somehow thought that again, it was probably fine, just something that didn't blend perfectly. The fact that I had some trouble blending reaffirmed this idea and it tasted fine anyways. It was only after about three fourths of the drink, the full thing being about 24 ounces, that I looked more closely at the smoothie and realized that whatever those bits were did not look like ice or anything I would normally put in it. And this is when it dawned on me as to what it could be. So I went over to check and surely enough, the protein powder scoop was gone. I somehow not only managed to not realize I was blending it in the first place, but then not question the obvious plastic chunks in the smoothie until it was almost gone, basically eating the entire thing. I did some Googling and it seems I'll be fine, but I'm honestly still in disbelief that it didn't occur to me sooner and I feel insanely stupid. I'm just glad it wasn't something much more toxic that I dropped in there without thinking. Based on my lack of awareness, it could have literally been anything. Although I suppose that is probably the best way of getting rid of something. Just throw it in my smoothie because clearly I won't notice. That is absolutely hilarious. You know you need to pay attention more in life when you don't taste the plastic in your smoothie. To his credit, it probably didn't taste like anything. It was probably just crunchy bits that he's like, yeah, you know, it's probably just ice. I think if anything, he definitely won the speedrun world record for consuming microplastic as fast as possible. All jokes aside, hopefully this guy's okay, and hopefully there's no negative repercussions as to when this comes out later, if you know what I mean. Because I could imagine that's going to be really gross, and hopefully there's no pain included. So best of luck to the original poster. I think you're going to need it. Today, I messed up by taking a joke a little too far and possibly damaging some relationships. And I'm not really 
sure what to do. First, let me start with some backstory. I started a new job last month and needed to move across the state for it. On my first day of orientation, I met this girl who we will call Sarah. That's not her real name. She was just starting as well. I immediately thought she was cute and so I set out to get to know her better. I learned that she was new to the state, having also moved for the job. And as a result, she also didn't know anyone in the area. We started talking and really hit things off and we quickly became friends. We started going for walks together and hanging out. I attempted to formally ask her out one day and then found out that she was actually in a long distance relationship with her boyfriend of almost two years. I was definitely disappointed, but I really enjoy hanging out and talking with her. So I asked if we could still be friends, to which she agreed, thankfully. Through one of our conversations, I learned that she wanted to get into Stardew Valley. It's a great game, by the way, and I encouraged her to get it. She found herself struggling with the game mechanics, so I went over last week to play co-op with her and help her understand how things work in the game. For those of you who are not familiar with Stardew Valley, you build relationships with the NPCs by giving them gifts, with some characters liking certain gifts more than others. She was starting to get mad, saying that the characters should just be happy that they're getting a gift at all. This led me to make a joke that by that same logic, she would be happy to receive a super random gift, like a potato or something like that, which I then tell her I would give her the next day. So, as a man of my word, the next day at work, I show up at her desk and gave her a potato, to which she found absolutely hilarious. I wish this is where the story ended, but if that was the case, I wouldn't be posting it, now would I? Things definitely spiraled out of control from here. The next day, her mom came to visit Sarah for the weekend, and thinking it would be funny, I decided to deliver a potato to her apartment so she would be forced to explain it to her mom. I had an empty Amazon bag that I put a potato in, along with a piece of lined paper with a crudely drawn heart on it, and dropped it off outside of her apartment while they were shopping. Upon their return, she found the box and, I believe, found it really funny how I stuck with the joke. Sarah and I have a similar sense of humor, so I assume she would know and understand that the heart was part of the joke and not anything more. Her mom, however, didn't see it that way and upon seeing the heart, accused Sarah of cheating on her boyfriend with me. I quickly apologized to Sarah for taking the joke a bit too far and causing her mom to think that she was cheating. Sarah told me that she cleared it up with her mom, so I assumed it was fine and back to normal. Well, last night and today, Sarah and I have been messaging each other, and last night I noticed that her normally longer messages had all but been reduced to one or two word responses. This seemed out of character for her, so I asked asked her if everything was okay. She told me that right now isn't really a good time and how she was still angry about the whole thing this weekend. As far as I was aware, she had thought the potato delivery was funny. So honestly, I had no idea that she was actually angry about it. This morning, she told me that she has a lot going on and she would appreciate it if I gave her some space and didn't message her for a while. This is super disappointing to me because she had quickly become my closest friend in this area where I don't know many people and now I I may have lost her as a friend because I took a joke too far. So here I am posting this down one good friend whose life I inadvertently made significantly more complicated. It sounds like this all got back to her boyfriend pretty quickly and now she's having some kind of relationship problem. I think you came at this with good intention and you really were just trying to make a joke but I think you definitely crossed the line in my opinion. Maybe I'm the outlier on this. Leave a comment and let me know if I am. But something like that seems more like flirting than a joke in my opinion. She already knows that you were interested in her at some point, and you were at least good friends to a certain extent, spending time playing video games, and at least having some common connection with that. But leaving a potato on her doorstep with a heart on it definitely kind of crosses the line of being a little bit weird, and in my opinion, is a little bit closer to flirting than it is to just being friends. Maybe I'm wrong. Leave a comment down below and tell me what you think. But I think that really did kind of cross a line, so I can completely understand where this lady's coming from. But in that same thought, let's Let's look at it rationally for a second. It's a potato, and it's clearly a joke based on previous experience. Like, maybe you weren't trying to flirt, but the mom, as well as the boyfriend most likely, definitely see this as flirting. I don't know, there's a lot of ambiguity here, so leave a comment down below. What would you do in this situation? Do you think the girlfriend's right to get upset about this? Do you think her boyfriend is causing problems in the background that maybe this guy just doesn't know about? Leave a comment, we would love to read it. My boyfriend's ex-girlfriend is someone he was planning on proposing to, and I can't help but think 
that now I'm just a backup option and I don't know what to do. I've been dating my boyfriend for around a year and a half. He's my first love, my first time, and is really the first serious relationship who's treated me like how I deserve to be treated. It doesn't mean that things are perfect, but on the whole, we are in love and put in the work to make sure our relationship is as healthy and loving as it can be. We initially met in another city. I moved for a job and now he's moving to be with me about two hours away next month. He's had two serious relationships before me. The first girl was his first love. They dated almost four to five years ago. She helped him through the death of his family member and then cheated about a year in and so they ended up breaking up. They got back together almost a year later for another six months. They booked a trip to Europe together and ring shop together so that he could propose at the end of the trip. That was all before she let him know she wanted to explore things with women and enter an open relationship. So as a result, he broke it off and she took her new girlfriend to Europe. His second year-long relationship was ended by the girl as she found someone on a dating app and they got engaged two months later. I would also like to note that I absolutely despise cheating and would never dream of doing what they did to him. I love this man and want to spend my life with him. However, I'm so worried he's hung up on his first ex that I struggle to let myself be happy in our relationship. I constantly compare myself to her and their timeline. She seemed more fun and carefree when compared to my type A tendencies. He says he wants to marry me, but will wait until he's emotionally and financially mature enough. I can't help but think that he didn't care about that when it came to her and that he supposedly just knew that she was the one when approaching marriage with his previous girlfriend. I don't really sense that he's going to become so much more ready in the next couple of years. I want to wait since I'm still young, but I worry that on his end, I'm just around at the right time and that I'll never measure up to her and the carefree time that he had with her. He even mentioned recently that, you know what, we'd probably get along as if it was supposed to be a compliment, which only reinforced my worry that I'm just a second choice. Why should she come up in a conversation at all? I love him and I can't tell if my anxiety is justified. Do I have the right to be worried? If not, how do I move past this retroactive jealousy? What should I do? It really sounds like you're just being overly anxious about this situation. I think worrying about what happened in a previous relationship is honestly completely pointless. Like that's a stage of his life that is completely gone and done with. He loves you. He wants to marry you. To say that you're just some kind of secondary option is just not true. Currently, you're the only option. It's so unfair to compare yourself to somebody's exes. You are not like them and that's a good thing. Otherwise, he wouldn't be with you. He clearly sees something in you that's worth spending his entire life with, no matter what. So honestly, I really do think you're just overthinking this problem and you're making things more complicated than it needs to be. So if anything, I think just have an honest conversation with him and express your concerns. I think you'll quickly realize that none of your concerns have any grounding to them and that in all actuality, he really does love only you and only wants to marry you. And that honestly might be the thing to get you past this situation. I just found out that I have two secret sisters and it has completely messed up my relationship with my dad and I don't know what to do. So last year, I learned that 10 years before I was born, my parents had twins and put them up for adoption. 2021 was the first year the records were unsealed and my parents and the twins were able to contact each other for the first time. Basically, the twins reached out one night and my parents told me the next day. But up till that point, I had no idea they existed. In terms of the twins, all is going okay. They're both really nice people and one of them is building a relationship with my family and wants to be a part of our lives. The other one has some issues with the adoption and isn't ready to take that step. I am genuinely happy for the sister interested in getting closer to us and I think she had wanted to find them forever and I'm glad it has worked out. But still, there is this problem I have with my dad. Growing up, he was insanely hard on me, extremely unflexible and extremely controlling. He is also very emotionally unavailable with very little empathy for others. He was emotionally distant and a very insecure parent. Now, I was not a perfect teenager. I could be stubborn and I had an attitude and my grades were average, so I wasn't the best student either. But I never got into any major trouble and I went on to grad school and run a successful business now. So finding out that he was literally dropping out of college and having twins at 20 while being so insanely strict with me for being an annoying but basically normal teenager has really messed me up. On top of that, he idolizes the one sister that he's building a relationship with. Essentially, he talks as if she could walk on water, when in reality, he has met her 
only one time, and that is as an adult. I'm sure she had her annoying phase as a teenager as well. I mean, she's human, right? Meanwhile, he continually undermines and puts down my life decisions. Anytime I take steps to improve my life, he puts them down, even though I know they were the right choice and it paid off. And he straight up acts like the other twin. You know, the one who wants nothing to do with them right now. I know this fantasy person he's idolizing doesn't exist, but it does hurt that he acts like he finally has a good daughter while finding ways to take out his anger on me and put me down. He doesn't have the self-awareness to realize how he's acting or how it would undermine my new relationship with my sister. Basically, he is insufferable right now and I hate every second I spend with him. So I've tried to minimize my time. At the same time, he is 70 and the clock is ticking. So I don't want to feel like this when he eventually passes away. I want to have a productive conversation about how hurtful he is being. Also, we can try and move past this. Has anyone dealt with this type of resentment and have advice for how to start the discussion? I am getting a therapist, by the way, and I start on Tuesday. But in the meantime, I have no idea what to do. What should I do? I think you've really expressed your opinion and where you're coming from quite concisely. And you've done a really good job of saying, hey, this is what I like and don't like. And the fact that he is gravitating towards this new sister who you never knew about, while also putting you down at every chance he gets, is completely toxic. I think, if anything, you should just be ready to go in there and speak your truth no matter what he says, even if he ends up still rejecting you. And if he still ends up rejecting you and putting you down and treating you like garbage, then let that be your sign to move on and get away from him. Because nobody should have to deal with that, no matter what age they're at. So I'm really sorry you're going through this, and hopefully it all works out. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the Cream of the Crop music. Search Cream of the Stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright-free music to use for your next stream.